Upgrading your tools is a time-honored tradition for anyone that wants to elevate the projects they're working on. 3D printers are no different, and you can find dozens of different modifications to make your printer better. Some simple, some complex. Lucky for you, the pros at MatterHackers have boiled it down to two lists of upgrades. Basic, which we've already covered, and advanced upgrades. The lists are differentiated by how intense the modification process is, or what the modification will get you in terms of capabilities. Let's take a look in no particular order of the top 10 advanced upgrades for 2021. There may be a point in your 3D printing career where you need a large 3D print to finish in a desperately short amount of time. 3D printers can only move so fast before they dramatically degrade the quality of the 3D print. Simple solution is to use a hot end that can push more filament through it faster than a standard hot end, allowing you to thicken up the layers and decimate the print times necessary. The Slice Engineering Mosquito Magnum, E3D Volcano with a copper heater block or dyes hot end can churn through an entire spool of filament faster than you could imagine. These hot ends feature longer melt zones than their standard counterparts to give filament adequate time to fully melt, even when you need to extrude filament for 0.8 millimeter layers. Higher flow rates aren't the only specialty of these hot ends. Higher maximum temperatures are possible thanks to the metal alloys that make up the components of each of these, with some capable of reaching temperatures as high as 500 degrees Celsius. If you're looking at 3D print at speeds faster than normal or temperatures past the industry standards, then a high temperature hot end might be in your future. When you enclose a 3D printer, you keep the air within the chamber warm and controlled, preventing temperature-sensitive 3D prints from warping or splitting. Cold, drafty air can't sweep through the build volume of the 3D printer. In most cases, this solves any temperature-related issue your 3D printer may be facing. However, with some more advanced materials that need even more heat in order to be 3D printed effectively, you need more than a fan to keep the hot end's heatsink cool. Liquid cooling your 3D printer's hot end can help prevent jams from heat creeping up through the heat break and into the heat sink by drawing any heat away that's made its way to the heat sink and keeping it localized in the heater block and nozzle. When attached to the extruder, liquid cooling helps prevent the extruder motor from overheating and skipping steps as it intermittently shuts off to prevent permanent damage. E3D and dyes have liquid cooling options for both their hot ends and extruders, so you can keep liquid cooling systems in the same ecosystem and with parts that you are familiar with. Within every 3D printer is a controller board that drives every part of the 3D printing process, from motion to heat up and every command in between. At release, a 3D printer will likely have a controller board perfectly fit for its use. But as 3D printing as a whole progresses, newer boards are launched with new features and at a cheaper price than the original controller board. Fortunately, it is possible to swap out your older controller board for an up-to-date board that might be quieter, faster, or has more room for expansion with additional modules. Upgrading your board is one of the most advanced procedures you can do with your 3D printer as it requires research and a very hands-on approach to translate all the innate settings in your 3D printer's firmware onto this new board. If you're considering a change of scenery, the INC Rambo is a fantastic board that, while still 8-bit, incorporates quiet TMC2130 stepper drivers for 1, 256 microstepping. The Duet family of controllers have a fully featured base unit and modular boards for increased usability, and Panocat has boards of various form factors to upgrade your 3D printer to 32-bit and allow you to remove the stepper drivers so you can keep your 3D printer running at peak industry performance at all times. If the controller board used by your 3D printer has stepper drivers that are removable, it's likely that they use the Pololu footprint, essentially the standard removable stepper driver format. This means that you're able to maintain, improve, and upgrade your 3D printer with the latest innovations without having to replace the entire controller board. Every stepper driver is a little different from the next, with some running extra quiet but have to be slow with heavy tool heads, or are a little noisy but can sling massive tool heads and gantries with ease. Panacad developed a larger format called Bigfoot that allows for more features and amperage to run through the stepper driver chip, making it an ideal choice for heavier 3D printers or printers that need to pick up the pace and ramp up print speeds. With your new hot end, you will likely need to upgrade your temperature sensor as well if you choose to print at higher temperatures. A standard thermistor, both glass bead and cartridge, will function just fine up to 300 degrees Celsius, but push it any further and you run the risk of inaccurate temperature readings. The Slice Engineering Thermistor and E3D PT100 sensor are both suited for higher temperatures while still having enough room at the low end to still be reliable for low temperature filaments like PLA. In our top 10 upgrades for 2021, we discussed drop-in extruder upgrades tailor-made and designed for specific 3D printers. 
Installation only required following their instructions and some slight firmware changes, if any, but not every 3D printer will have an extruder designed to fit on them exactly. Instead, you may need to design your own mount or download one previously designed, splice some wires, and make some more changes to the firmware in order to install it properly. All that is still worth the effort of installing a new extruder, as something like a Bontec BMG can bring so much utility to your 3D printer. High quality extruders like those from Bontec or E3D will have dual drive gears to pinch the filament from both sides for increased torque, an internal gear ratio for even more torque than the stepper motor could put out on its own, and a tension adjuster to put optimal pressure on the filament being used to prevent slippage. Every extruder is a little different from the next, so you may need to find yourself modifying the firmware, but only enough to reverse motor direction or change E-steps. Build plate adhesion is one of the most important aspects of 3D printing. Without it, your entire 3D print will tip over and be nothing more than scrap. Fortunately, Magigoo has many formulations of their bed adhesive solution for various 3D printing materials, from baseline PLA to the advanced polypropylene. Every Magigoo type is easy and simple to apply. Unscrew the cap, press the applicator down, and start spreading the adhesive across the entire glass build plate. Removal is just as easy. A little warm soapy water, a towel, and some elbow grease, and you'll be back to a fresh glass bed. Magigoo has even published a full list of the materials they've tested, the type of Magigoo used, and their temperature settings, all in an effort to take the guesswork out of it and get you right to printing. For some materials, fumes are an unavoidable part of the process. Some 3D printers have built-in fume extraction fans with filters, like the Zmorph behind me. But if the 3D printer doesn't have its own enclosed build chamber and instead relies on a DIY unit, then fume extraction is up to the user to configure. Bofa makes fume extraction units in various sizes, which makes it easy to find the perfect size for your use case. Every unit comes with connection hoses to make integration easy. Simply install one end of the inlet port and the other end to your enclosure, turn it on, and the Bofa will do the rest. Not every 3D printer is capable of 3D printing multiple colors or multiple materials without serious modification. Unless, of course, you use the Palette 2 S or Palette 2 Pro S. Palette is a multi-filament extrusion system you can connect to nearly any 3D printer that uses 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. Depending on the firmware used by the 3D printer, there may be some incompatibility. So be sure to check Mosaic's list of compatible printers or give us a call and we can get you taken care of. If it is compatible with your 3D printer, the Palette 2 S will talk to your 3D printer to make sure it knows the right point to cut one strand of filament and splice on another. So you can have 3D prints in four crisp colors by purging out the blended filament in between, or you can integrate soluble supports into the splice line of filament, enabling your single extrusion 3D printer to utilize dissolvable supports for complicated geometries. There is some calibration and setup involved, but thankfully Mosaic has many guides and walkthroughs to help guide you through the process. Whether you have a massive print farm and need some insurance, or you have a 3D printer of questionable quality, a fire suppression system is a worthwhile investment in case of emergency. The BlazeCut T-Series fire suppression system is an easy to install passive fire suppression system that doesn't require any external element in order to activate. By relying on pressure building inside the tube to set it off, you don't have to worry about dead batteries preventing it from doing its job. We've tested this ourselves using an older, no-name printer with its limited safety features disabled, and the BlazeCut T-Series successfully put out the flames before the entire enclosure started to burn up. Even if you have full confidence in your 3D printers, having one of these installed can take a huge weight off your shoulders with the peace of mind it brings. Because so many of you felt it was an important upgrade, I want to give an honorable mention to enclosures. These are things that you can either build or buy that will encase your 3D printer and control the air within it by just not allowing drafty air inside. So you can get something as advanced as the air manager for Ultimakers or as simple as the DIY flat packed and laser cut panels so you can build an enclosure to enclose your pulse or your Creality. But these are things that you can have when you want to print with some more advanced materials like ABS or polycarbonate which are more sensitive to temperature and can split or warp without the enclosure at all. Not every upgrade will make sense for everyone. Some may find the Palette 2 S significantly more essential than printing at higher temperatures. So it's important to consider what goals do you have for your 3D printers and which upgrade guides you further down that path. There are many directions you can go and hopefully this list gets you headed in the right one. Any upgrades we didn't mention here or in the previous video that has made a big difference for you, well, we'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching top 10 advanced upgrades for 2021. Personally, my favorite's gonna have to be the Slice Engineering Mosquito Magnum because I do have one installed at home, but that's just because I love the thicker layers and the faster print speeds that I can get with it. 
If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you in the next one.